and with him light came into the world. Why? Because the world was in darkness, spiritual darkness. To glorify and praise God for his gift of light is the true spirit of Christmas. And this is what we can do as we observe it. On the third Sunday of Advent, let us light the shepherd's candle, symbolizing the act of sharing Christ. And like the shepherds, let us glorify God. Luke 2.20, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. God's people said. Amen. 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 Are you glad to be in God's house this morning? Amen. Amen. I sure am. <laughs> I really am. That song pierces our heart. Do you know? Do you know? 
Do we really know him as we ought to know him? Do we really love him as we ought to love him? Do we live for him as we ought to live for him? And are we willing to die for him? Because he died for us. Do you know? Do you know? Isn't it wonderful that you could say in your heart this morning, if you're a Christian, that you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Let's give him a hand of praise this morning. Amen. Amen. Open the Word of God with us, please, to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 1 through 6. Verses 1 through 6. The Christmas story never gets old. Year after year we hear it. Year after year we read it. Year after year we celebrate it, but it never gets old. It never gets old. Because it speaks of the eternal Christ who never gets old. He is eternal. Let's look at this particular portion of the birth of Jesus, Matthew 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we sing his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and rightly so, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people Israel. Where did Jesus come from? Where did Jesus come from? Before you answer, think about it. There's never been a birth like the birth of Jesus. No truth has been assailed with greater energy and greater evil than the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. I want you to listen to this statement. The Talmudic tradition presents Jesus as the illegitimate son of Mary and a dissolute Roman soldier. How tragic. How pitiful. How evil. How evil. And I want to remind you this morning, my friend, there are people in this world that believe that. May God help their soul. May God help their soul. We need to love them, and we need to pray for them. According to the Bible, Jesus was created by the Holy Spirit in the virgin womb of his mother, Mary. Look in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. But while he brought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David... Do not be afraid to take to you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was more than just a baby. We had an opportunity to see a Christmas program last night, and they sent a song I'd never heard of. A baby changes everything. What a beautiful song. What a beautiful song. But he was more than a baby. He was Jesus, and that word means Savior. Uh, He was Christ, and that means anointed of God. He wasn't an ordinary baby. Uh, He was the Son of God, and he was the Son of Man. He was God in human flesh, and he was born a king. And he was born a king. The birth of Jesus is prophesied in Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Just write that down. We won't take time to go there this morning. But in the prophecy of Michael, chapter 5, verse 2, he predicts the birth of Jesus. I find it very interesting in Matthew chapter 2 in our text this morning that the wise men who came from the east very specifically said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? He was born a king. He was not born to be a king. He was born a king. Can you say amen? Amen. 
We're born to be a lot of things. <laughs> but Jesus was not born to be a king. He was born a king. And when they looked into his face in that manger scene so long ago, they looked into the face of a king, even as a little baby. And so his kingship that he had with God the Father in heaven followed him to earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. He brought his kingship with him because the Bible says specifically he was born a king. He was born a king. I want you to listen to this quote. I discovered it just this week. Out of the dust came man, and out of the man came the woman, and out of the woman came the Son of God, and out of the Son came the church, and out of the church came the message of Christ. Powerful, powerful. Jesus was born a king. The moment he experienced physical life on this earth. He was a king. The moment he took his first earthly breath, he was a king. He brought his kingship with him. He was king in heaven. He was Lord in heaven. He was Jesus in heaven. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. That's what Christmas is all about. Out of the dust came man. Out of the man came woman. And out of the woman came the Son of God. And out of the Son came the church. Praise God this morning in his house. Praise him. Praise him. Listen, if you are a born-again child of God this morning, and you are a part of the family of God here at Rocky Hill Baptist Church, or any other Bible-believing church, you are a part of the body of Christ, and that is awesome. That is awesome. Church is not an organization. It is a living organism infused with the power of the Holy Spirit of God. It never has been an organization. And if you think it's an organization, you're going to miss the blessings of God because organizations fail. We are not an organization. We are a living entity because out of heaven came the King Jesus and to this earth. He was born in this earth. And he was born a king. King of the Jews. He was born a king. Majesty. Glory. Honor. And praise to his name this morning. I hope and pray in my heart this morning. That we will get focused on what Christmas is really all about. I love the festivity. I love decorating. <laughs> I love trimming the tree. I love the food that comes. Oh, my, how I love that. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? I thought you'd say amen this morning. <laughs> amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I love all that stuff. I, I love the children and the grandchildren coming home. I love to see the headlights come and the taillights go. But I love it. I love it. I love it. If you're not a grandparent, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just wait till you're a grandparent. You'll know. You'll know exactly. When they leave, you'll say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. But church, I want to tell you something this morning. You're part of something big. It's bigger than you. And it's bigger than me. The church is eternal. The church is eternal. It is that only living organism outside of marriage, outside of marriage, that has the eternal blessings of God on it. And so you're part of something exciting, something wonderful. You're part of kingship. Listen, the Queen of England has nothing on you and me. <laughs> that little baby that's going to be born, oh, I feel sorry for that little baby. <laughs> It'll never have any privacy. The paparazzi will follow it all of its days unless Jesus comes. <laughs> but listen, I want to tell you, the Queen of England has never known the majesty of the King of this world, Jesus Christ. Never. So I tell you this morning, you're part of something wonderful and great. And we need to understand, he was born a king. He was not born to be a king. He was born a king. He was born a king. 
And we make choices after our birth as we grow older to be certain things. Jesus didn't have to make that choice because he was that eternally. Amen. Never had to make that decision. He was that eternally. Secondly, he lived his life as master on this earth and as a servant. In Matthew's gospel, chapter 20, let's flip over there for just a moment. Matthew chapter 20, very interesting verse of scripture. Matthew 20, verse 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, or some translation says to be ministered to, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the same king that was born as a baby, born a king. He brought his kingship with him, but listen to this carefully. He also, he also became a servant. How many kings do you know that are servants? They don't enter that realm. They have people waiting on them hand and foot. I love to be waited on. That doesn't happen often. (laughs) I'm just kidding, Kay. (laughs) Just kidding. Thought I'd better redeem myself. Yeah. (laughs) But Jesus said, look, when I brought my kingship here to this earth, I didn't come just to be a king. I am a king. And I'll always be a king. But I humbled myself and took upon myself the role of a servant. And they called him master. And they called him master in the New Testament. Master. Good teacher. How is so and so, you know? When Jesus left heaven, he didn't leave his kingship, but he left his glory behind and he became a servant. Could I suggest to you this morning, child of God, church member, there's some things you and I got to leave behind. Some things we got to leave behind. We got to shake loose from those things that are not of God. And when Jesus came to this earth, he came leaving his glory behind because God would restore that in the coming future. When Jesus comes back again, You remember Jesus prayed, Lord, restore unto me the joy or the glory that I had with you in the beginning. I have glorified you now upon this earth in my life because I left my glory with you. And I came to this earth and I needed to become a servant even as a king. The most wonderful passage in all of the Bible that speaks about that is the book of Philippians. Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Philippians. Powerful, powerful passage in chapter 2, beginning in verse 5. Talks about the humility of Jesus, talks about the humanity of Jesus, and talks about the servanthood of Jesus. Let's read that passage. Uh, Chapter 2 of Philippians. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. This king humbled himself and became obedient even unto death. Therefore, verse 9, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Can you say amen this morning? One day every knee on planet earth will bow. Every tongue either saved or unsaved, righteous or wicked, will confess that Jesus is Lord and that he is king. Can you say amen this morning? I tell you, that's coming. And it's sooner than we realize. It's sooner than we... If you don't make him king in your life now, you will make him king then. If you don't bow before him now, you will bow before him then. If you don't confess him now, you will confess him. Then The tragedy of that is, on one side, is that those who are lost will confess him, but it will not save him, them. 
they will confess that yes, he was the Son of God.